How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. This is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck. And this is the 150th video I am uploading to this channel. Isn't that crazy? 150 videos? I feel like I just made the first one. So whether you're new here or you've been here for a while, thanks for watching these videos. I appreciate it so much. And if you're not subscribed, I would also appreciate that. Help me get to 100,000 subs. I want the silver play button, but for real, Thank you so much for watching these videos. In today's video, I've got three news topics to cover. The first one is we got yet another Steam Deck beta update, and this one is awesome if you've been waiting for them to actually make the game recording feature good. Second on the list, I've seen a lot of people talking about how this Decky plugin to remove the shader cache is deleting a lot of people's saves. I'm gonna tell you how to not have that happen. And third, it's Warhammer Day, which means there's a Humble Bundle going on right now that has two games that you can get for 15 bucks that I think are must plays on the Steam Deck. All right, let's talk about this first news story here which is the latest Steam Deck beta. This is the newest version of SteamOS 3.6 and the first thing I want to cover is they say once again they fixed the issue where if you have an SD card plugged into your Steam Deck it won't not show your library anymore. I think we're going on like the third or fourth time they've said this so hopefully it fixed it because I am still experiencing this problem. I won't be able to test it just yet though because I've been playing Bolt Gun on my Steam Deck and it doesn't work on the new beta. It just does a black screen so I had to go back to stable to have that game actually Actually work. So whenever the beta update ends up fixing bolt gun, I will switch back to the beta. But the real meat of this beta has to do with game recording. They have added a ton of features. So I'm just going to read them off my phone and give you my opinion on them. The first one is that they've added .h265 encoding for the actual game recording, which is great because if you're someone who uploads YouTube videos, YouTube loves .h265 format. Like when my Final Cut app exports in ProRes, it exports in like five minutes, which is great. If I export an h it takes 10 minutes, but if I use ProRes to upload to YouTube, it takes way longer than H.265, so it's worth the extra uh, export time. Now, this will only work on Windows for now. They say it's coming soon to Mac and Linux, and your GPU needs to support it, but if you've got a modern GPU, I would say if you bought one within the last five years, you're going to be fine because uh, I record in H.265 on my gaming PC all the time, and it works just fine. And they've also added the ability to record in 4K when you're using H.265, which is excellent. Uh, I have a 4K monitor, so I'll, I'm like excited to be able to record my gameplay footage in 4K with the best video format for uploading to YouTube. This is so great for someone like me who records a lot of gameplay. I know it doesn't matter to most people, but I am excited about it. They've also added a new auto quality feature, which is enabled by default. And what this is going to do is check to see how much storage you have available on your SSD or hard drive if you're still using one of those. So if you have a Steam Deck, you probably only have a few gigabytes free because I love filling up my Steam Deck. It's going to look at that storage and say, huh, they don't have that much storage. I'll record at a lower resolution and it'll kick in at 1080p and lower it accordingly from there so that the video files will take up less space. I think that's great. If you're someone running an ultra wide monitor, which is something that I've been really eyeing for Black Friday this year, I want to play Space Marine 2 and ultra wide. They've added support for recording on that, which is nice because that's kind of a niche feature that I didn't expect to see. So yeah, if you're playing on ultra wide and you want to record your gameplay, you're going to be able to do that now. They've also added in a crop tool so if you're playing a game with black bars like the evil within or death stranding director's cut you can actually crop in the gameplay to just be the gameplay so it won't export with the black bars i love watching videos on youtube that are exported that way exporting videos themselves should be a lot quicker now considering that it's using the gpu to encode the video which is great i don't know how it was doing it before but it didn't really seem to take that long i hope you can export a full video file in mp4 format now that was an issue i was running into with the steam deck version of it it was like great Great to be able to record all this gameplay. I tried it with Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit and then I tried to export it and realized that you can't just export a full file to your Steam Deck's desktop. It's crazy. I hope they add that feature soon. And finally, they added the ability to go into a game's launch setting and tell it to record indefinitely. So if you're playing something like Hunt Showdown and you wanna make sure you have your sick clips, uh, you're going to be able to have all the footage that you've ever played of that game available, which is sweet. So yeah, game recording getting better. I don't want to criticize it too much because it's still in beta, but yeah, being able to export from my Steam Deck to the desktop, just a video of the clip I recorded would be awesome. Just how it works on my PS5, where I hit the share button, I click record, I record some gameplay for up to an hour, then I can put it on my external SSD and everything's great. That's exactly what I want, but I want to be able to do it on my Steam Deck, and I feel like that's not too big of an ask considering the 
that you know the xbox the switch and the ps5 do it i want my steam deck to be a mini ps5 because it's like 80 percent there again beta updates your mileage may vary uh, i'm having an issue with bolt gun you might have an issue with another game so it's really easy to downgrade back to stable you just click stable under settings uh, under system and then it'll restart it'll download the update apply it and then you'll have one more client update to install that'll bring you back to the right version it's like the only device that lets you hop between beta and stable so easily and i love it i think it's great so you can test out these new features see how well they work and if you don't like them you can go right back to the safe and stable version of SteamOS 3.0 love these beta updates for another reason as well of course they get us one step closer to the full release of SteamOS 3 i cannot wait i'm so excited i know people get mad at me when i say that i want it but i want it it's been two and a half years they announced it before the steam deck let's get moving on it let's let's make this happen i'll even install it on my rog ally if, if i installed on my rog ally x valve will you release it faster for regular gaming pcs it's like that trade deal meme i get steam os 3.0 on my gaming laptop valve gets me installing it on my rog ally x despite liking having a windows handheld that uh can play games that the steam deck can't in the rare occasion that that happens you know it's a fair trade all around at least that's how i feel anyway that brings us to the next news story here which is don't lose your save so right now there's this issue going around where you can use a plugin on decky loader that'll clear out your cached files so like when you see your steam deck downloading 5 million games after an update it's not actually downloading games it's downloading shaders that have been collected from other people playing that game on their steam deck those of course take up a lot of storage i will say they used to take up way more storage like it was at a point with my micro sd card where i had like 300 gigabytes of games on my one terabyte micro sd and then there was like almost 200 gigabytes of shaders so they were taking up a lot of space now the split is a lot better i think it's only like 20 or 30 gigabytes of shaders instead of like hundreds of them so things have gotten a lot better but i understand why people want to use this decky loader plugin because you're if you're constantly deleting games or installing them off your steam deck it doesn't always do the best job of deleting shaders for games that you don't have on your deck anymore and then those can pile up in the background and just take up a bunch of your storage so instead of just wiping your steam deck and starting from fresh with the games you are playing having a decky loader plugin is a good idea but there have been a few posts on reddit going around where people are using this storage cleaner and it's wiping out the saves for their games i think the one i saw said they had 194 hour save for persona 3 reload and that was wiped and it didn't download a cloud save for some reason. That's gotta be down to the fact that for some reason, some games will save your save in the prefix folder. So the one that has the Windows emulation layer that has like the My Documents folder, some games save the save there. And if you're clearing out the cache shaders, it's clearing out the prefix. So it might delete that folder as well. But if you go through this process and your saves are deleted and they don't download from the cloud, there's actually a cool site you can go to called store.steampower.com slash account slash remote storage. You know, the official Steam website website and if you go to that link you'll actually see every save that you have in your cloud storage just listed out for you and you can individually download them and then you can put them where they go on your steam deck and you'll have your save back i honestly didn't know about this feature until i started scanning the reddit thread so shout out to the guy who posted about it in there this is awesome you can't really do this on the playstation 5 because they paywall cloud saves which i think is just completely insane to do that so if you don't have ps plus when you get a new console like when my ps if I pro comes if i don't have ps plus subscription active i'll have to in, like plug in a usb stick or an external ssd and export all of my saves and then plug that ssd into my ps5 pro to then transfer all those saves steam cloud being a free feature is how it should be but we have to praise valve for making it free because other people like sony don't for some reason because they know they can grift money off of you for a feature that should be just built into the console i gotta be real i had decky loader installed for about six months when i was trying to record game footage and it didn't work more often than it did like it, it wouldn't even load it would just show a little question mark logo over it and i was like this isn't even worth having anymore so when i got my steam deck oled i didn't even bother installing decky loader and once again got to give a huge shout out to valve a lot of the main features people use decky loader for uh, have been implemented into steam os 3.0 officially so i've had less and less reason to even want to install it as time has gone on the one thing that i really want them to include in a future steam deck update 
update is themes. We're constantly fighting this battle on the PS5 because every PS console since the PSP has had excellent themes, including the Vita and the PSP and the PS3, PS4, not the PS5. So the Steam Deck, you can get them third party and they are really cool visual tweaks to the way the Steam OS home screen is laid out. If other people are doing it, I think it'd be awesome if Valve kind of extended the custom boot animations they've been doing to be backgrounds at least for the Steam OS home screen. I think that would be sweet. Anyway, that brings us to the third news story here, which is the first and only time I think I've ever talked about a Humble Bundle on this channel, but this Warhammer one, it's too good to pass up. So you get a lot of games for 15 bucks in this Warhammer bundle. I think it's like nine games, but if you've ever played Warhammer computer games, they are of extremely varying quality. There are a few good outliers like Space Marine, Space Marine 2, two of the ones I'm going to talk about in a second, and uh, Dawn of War 2 and 1. Dawn of War 3 sucks. So the two I want to focus on are Chaos Gate, Demon Hunters, and uh, Warhammer Inquisitor, Martyr, and Prophecy. So Chaos Gate is a game I have been addicted to for the past month. It is excellent. It is a shameless ripoff of XCOM, but you get to play as the Grey Knights, who are like incorruptible. They can use the warp, they can use magic powers, and they're also knights. So the way that I've been using my tank with Terminator armor is he can teleport. So my favorite thing to do is when I encounter a new group of enemies on a map, I just teleport to them and beat the shit out of them before my squishier characters even get close enough to actually be engageable in combat. There is so much freedom with all the different moves and everything you have, and the story is excellent. You're fighting Nurgle's forces across the galaxy or the star system where he's infecting the worlds with this thing called the Bloom, and it charges up every turn. And when you get the Bloom charged up, it opens up a warp rift and more enemies come in, so it like gives you this stressful encounter experience throughout every single map. And unlike XCOM, it doesn't have hit chance. You always hit no matter what, which is great. You either do hit or you don't hit. Like if you're too far away to actually hit with a ranged weapon, you it'll tell you, it'll be like 0% chance. And if you're close enough to hit with a ranged weapon, you'll 100% hit that character. You, you might hit them with a few bullets and not the entire spread, but the closer you get, the more spread you're gonna hit with. It's great. It's a great combat system and an excellent game. The $15 bundle also seems to come along with the DLC, which is of varying quality, I would say. The DLC, one of them adds in dreadnoughts, but you can only use them on specific maps. So if you had this power fantasy of being able to use walking mausoleum mechs, uh, you can only use them on specific maps, but where you get to use them, it's awesome. You can just walk through cover, beat the shit out of people. They have an insane amount of action points every turn, and they can just wipe out an entire map before your guys even get a chance to fight, which is awesome. Makes sense why they're not usable in the rest of the game. And then the other one gives you Imperial Assassins, which they're cool. You can use them in every map, but they don't have full skill trees. They just have a one to seven level skill tree that increases their abilities power as they level up. And if they die, they're not resurrectable. They have permadeath on all the time. So there is some drawbacks to using them. Because if one dies, you've technically wasted a lot of time investing into a character that you can never get back, which you could have put into a Grey Knight who gets three chances to be resurrected after they go down before they have permadeath turned on. So it actually makes a lot more sense to just use the Grey Knights instead of an assassin or one of these Imperial characters. But it's still cool DLC and one of them is a sniper who has an insane amount of range. So you can hit people across the map and that sniper packs a punch and they have cloaking. So I actually had an assassin make it through not only just the prologue, but a few levels after that. And after that, I just switched to using Grey Knights. It's a really good game. But the other game that I think is worth playing is Warhammer Inquisitor Martyr. This game is a Diablo style ARPG. I gotta be real. I'm kind of sick of the point. I'm sick of the clicky games, the clicky ARPGs. I've sunk like a hundred hours into Diablo 4 and I played some last Epoch. I wasn't really into it. But Inquisitor Martyr is cool because you can use guns, which is a little bit different than most of the ARPGs out there. And at medium settings, uh, if you turn off V-Sync, it'll run at a rock solid 40 FPS. And they made it so you can access any of the game seasons for free at any time you want. So you can just roll a new character and play any of the seasons, which have their own modifiers and gear, which is sweet. It also just added in an offline mode, which makes it great for Steam Deck. I think for 15 bucks, so 750 for each of these games, it's totally worth trying them out. The other ones, not so great. I think one of them is called Battle Sector. I've never played that game. I think it's supposed to be decent. The other one is called like Realms of Ruin. It's Age of Sigmar, so I don't really care about it, but it has mostly negative reviews on Steam, so it probably isn't worth playing. But for 15 bucks, you get two incredible games, and then you get the spinoff like demo game for Inquisitor Martyr, which is called Prophecy, which I think is a unique game. So yeah, if you've never bought a Humble Bundle before, my friend Bill from Nerdnest was telling me you can have affiliate links, but I did not know 
that until right now. I don't have them set up, so I'll, I'll link it in the description, but I'm not getting any kickback or anything from that. I'm only telling you about these games because I'm genuinely into both of them right now, and I think they're pretty cool. And then the last segment I have today is viewer questions. I said in my last video, if you guys have any questions for me to answer in videos about anything, I will gladly do it, so leave them down in the comments. And Grimlock161 left me a really interesting question, so I figured I'd cover it in this video. So Grimlock wants to know what my favorite Lovecraftian elder or outer god, eldritch horror, and or any cosmic or weird horror work that I enjoy. That was a hard thing to actually say. I tried that 15 times, but I'm cutting that out of the video. Um, I'm kind of into Lovecraft stuff. I'm like a casual Lovecraft fan. I have played a few board games with my friends that I thought were decent, but my favorite Lovecraftian movie ever is a 50-50 split between Event Horizon. I think it's Paul W.S. Anderson's best movie by 50 miles. It's just an incredible Warhammer inspired weirdly uh, horror movie where everything takes place on this spaceship that looks like a gothic church and it is one of the most gory screwed up movies I've ever seen. It has Sam Neill and the other movie In the Mouth of Madness also has Sam Neill. It's directed by John Carpenter and it's about this writer called Sutter Kane who has to like unravel this mystery where his books are pretty much coming to life and he kind of realizes that he might be a character written by Sutter Kane himself. It has excellent immaculate October vibes. If you're looking for a movie to get you in the fall mood like I always was when I was living in LA, having grown up in Michigan where the fall vibes are immaculate throughout October, being in LA where it's 90 degrees and dusty and smells like pee everywhere sucked. So I would watch this movie every year along with Sleepy Hollow, which is not Lovecraftian, but uh, yeah. In the Mouth of Madness is one of John Carpenter's most deep cut underrated horror movies ever. Sam Neill is one of my favorite actors ever. My all time favorite movie is Jurassic Park. I've always loved Dr. Alan Grant. I think Sam Neill is an underrated actor to the supreme level. Outside of that, there's a few other Lovecraft things I'm into. I, I just gotta be real. I've never really read any Lovecraft literature or anything. I think the vibes of Lovecraft stuff is cool. I just like, I just kind of glaze over when the explanation for something in a horror movie or book or game is like, it's too crazy to understand. It's like, I don't want to call it lazy, but it's, it just comes off that way a little bit to me personally. I'm like, I want to have an explanation sometimes. I know a lot of people love horror stuff that isn't explained because that's what makes it scary. But to me, uh, a guy like Michael Myers showing up on my doorstep and cutting my head off, that is definitely scary. If you want to see a really cool vision of how brutal Michael Myers can be, go over to my channel, Jimmy Champagne, and watch my two fan films, Happy Halloween and Happy Halloween 2. Happy Halloween 2 was filmed in my house when I bought it, and it was just a mess. Like, everything was all gutted. We didn't have floors. We didn't have painted walls. We didn't have a kitchen. And we cut my friend's face with an angle grinder. We made an effect of that, obviously, and we sprayed blood everywhere, and it soaked through the carpet. And when I had someone come polish my floors that were under the carpet, the blood soaked through, and they were like, what the fuck was going on in here? Which is a funny story from that. So yeah, thanks for the question, Grimlock. If you guys have any other questions, please leave them in the comments below, and I will answer them in future videos. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, and shape on.